Texas A&M head coach Mike Elko previews how the Aggies are going to try and stop Arkansas quarterback Taylor Green. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. On the show today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about some quotes from yesterday's press conferences. Most importantly, talk about the offense of Arkansas, how the Aggies are going to stop it. We're going to talk about, is Arkansas's defense legit? Or, I mean, is it... Is it good? Because I, I'm not so sold. And then I'm going to reiterate what I was trying to discuss yesterday with Marcel Reed. I think some people weren't fully picking up what I was putting down, so we're going to run through that one more time at the tail end of the show today. But getting right into it, the first thing here that I want to talk about from Coach Elko's press conference is his thoughts on quarterback Taylor Green. So first, his thoughts on using a spy against Taylor Green. He says, it's way more complicated than that. When you tr- uh, What you try to do first and second down within each of your coverage structures is figure out who the guy that needs to pay attention to them as the play develops. We're a little bit fortunate because we had um, some protection for this against Notre Dame, you know, getting ready for Riley Green, and, uh, Riley Green, for Riley Leonard and what he does um, with his legs. But, you know, I think – Taylor Green, man, I'll, I'll tell you, he made some mistakes last Saturday. He didn't, he wasn't perfect, but he can, he can move the football. He can move the football with his legs. He can get it downfield with his arm. I think Coach Petrino is doing a great job of helping him uh, develop. And I'm just telling you, this offense is capable of scoring some points. Now, You could also look at it on the flip side and say, well, Auburn turned the football over 416 times and they were only uh, Arkansas. They were only able to manage 24 points. And that's true, too. Um, And I and I Texas A&M's defense, I think, is substantially better than Auburn's, Uh, you know. And and so the, the point here is this. I don't. I think that maybe. Arkansas, I think their offense is is good and is explosive, but I think Texas A&M can stop them. I don't think that it's going to be a game where the Razorbacks score more than twenty five, you know, twenty eight points. I, I don't like twenty one. I think Arkansas realistically is going to score like twenty one points, and they're a solid offense. That's as a defense. If you get if you win this game and you give up twenty one points, I think you feel very very good about that. Um, and then Coach Elko went on to say this about Taylor Green: When a player has the ability to make explosive plays, it enhances your focus level from play to play, regardless of down and distance, area of the field, or situation. He has the ability to create a play down the field. There's a lot he can do. He's got a strong arm. He can push it down the field. He can run. Um, and, and, you know, that's definitely something that Texas A&M needs to be ready for because he, when you have that type of guy, his athleticism, it's different than Marcel Reed's and it's different than Connor Rigman's. I think that Marcel or that, uh, Taylor Green is more of an explosive runner than Connor Wigman. It's more of a threat than Connor Rigman, but I and I and I don't think he's as explosive as Marcel Reed, but he's also six foot six, two thirty, and he's able to kind of once he gets that going downhill, he's like a Josh Allen, Cam Newton, and I'm not comparing him to those guys when it comes to the other aspects of the game, but I'm talking about just running, you know, once he gets moving, he's a large quarterback. Um so yeah, I think a huge key to victory for the Aggies is going to be stopping this guy because if he has a good game, we've talked about him. He's already almost to a thousand yards um, through the air. I mean, he's got a ton of yards on the ground. 
he's able to make something explosive happen every single time the football touches his hands. So, you know, a huge key all week for the Aggies defense needs to be getting ready for um, Taylor Green. And I think Coach Uncle makes an incredible point talking about how preparing for Riley Leonard does will help prepare this defense for what Taylor Green brings to the table. So I think the Aggies are fortunate there, but you got to be ready. You got to know what he's able, what he can do with his legs and with his arm, because he is very capable of, of, of making magic happen with his, with his legs and with his arms. So the Aggies have got to be ready for Taylor Green. Coach Oko went on to say this about the offense. Um, about score margins. Offensively, we've been a little bit more balanced. We've scored on the first drive of each game, which was uh, which has been good. We have had balanced halves. Defensively, we've been much more lopsided, and we're doing things the right way. Are we making the right adjustments? What has happened? What has been very similar play types against similar looks? Where um, we do it the way we're supposed to, and in the second half, we just don't. We talked about that yesterday. Um, second half, let me, I pulled up the numbers. I think it was, um, you've given up 70, um, or no, you've given up 73 total points in 30, 40, 50, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 64 of them have come in the second half. I believe the numbers don't quote me. I'm not going to pull it back up, but point is the Aggies have given up a lot of second half points and that is a losing recipe. So I agree with Coach Oko. This is something that they need to get dialed in um, over the next few weeks because, once again, that will lose you close football games. Coach Oko um, had this to say about uh, Conor Rigman. He said he'll be a game-time decision. I, this is just the most interesting quarterback situation I've ever seen because this AC thing, this is not – it's not a fun thing to deal with when you're trying to, you know, throw and move and, and play football. It's not an easy injury to deal with. This is not one you want to rush back from, especially playing quarterback. And when he's healthy, what are they going to do? I, I just this is really interesting to me. Um, we're just going to have to see. But as of right now, I am planning on Marcel Reed being the quarterback for the Aggies on Saturday. Um. So that I think that is what we all need to kind of prepare for mentally, and, and and we'll see what happens, you know, when we get to the Thursday Friday practice reports and stuff like that. Um, Coach Oko went on to say this about the A and M Arkansas series of late. He said the environment plays a role. Uh, kids play their best football on that stage. Everyone gets excited when playing in that stadium. Who wouldn't? Um, well, I added the who wouldn't because who wouldn't it be an awesome place to play football, uh, foosball. We always seem to get their best. We try to get we try to get them our best. When you do that, you get some exciting, entertaining, close games. From my perspective, they weren't that entertaining because they were always too close. So you know, Coach Elko's like, I don't want to be playing those tight games, and I'm with them. Um, so. Yeah, this series we talked about, it's been a weird one. It's been a close one. I think Texas A&M, maybe could they have ended that narrative last year, perhaps? Um, I think this is a football game, and we're going to talk about how important it is here in segment two, but, I mean, this is this is a huge game, and we'll get more into that. Um, so Coach Elko had this to say about – um, 2024 being the last Southwest Classic at AT&T Stadium. He said, we'll play wherever we have to play. I don't have a strong opinion. It's always a cool environment when you have split fans, but I certainly see wh uh, why what both teams want the fourth home SEC game. Um, I agree with that because it does take away an SEC game, and you know, that, that stinks a little bit. Or home SEC game, you know what I'm saying, um, for, for one team, and that is just somewhat unideal. Um. We're going to move on. We're going to talk a little bit about um, it, is Arkansas's defense legit? We're talking about how important this game is. But I also want to talk a little bit in segment two about Coach Elko's quote on Moose Muhammad. It was a really interesting one, and we need to deep dive into it. We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. Mm -hmm. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over 
at five hour energy. Five hour energy fixes tired fast. Whether you have a long list to do for work or a list of do it yourself projects to tackle at home, take a five hour energy shot so you can check everything off your list. If you're like me, you always have a large list of projects for the home. Got a lot. I got to build a cabinet right now. I got to build a bedside table right now. There's a lot going on here. And, you know, when I need to do that, the best thing, what I'm going to be using to help me get through all that is a five hour energy shot. With zero sugar and convenient portable size, it's the perfect pick me up for getting stuff done. The five hour energy website has flavors galore like watermelon, tropical burst, grape, berry, and more. It's, there's a flavor for everyone, and you might as well try them all. On the site, you can even have the option to build your own 12 or 24 pack. You choose the flavors and it's delivered right to your door. If you go to 5hourenergy.com, that is the number 5hourenergy.com, and get some 5 hour energy product today, you can use my promo code locked on CFB to receive 20% off your order. The, uh, this offer is only valid until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders. Go to 5hourenergy.com today. So, moving on here in some of these quotes from Coach Elko. He had this to say about Moose Muhammad, and this was an interesting one to me. Um, I think there's some writing on the wall on this one. So he says, he has to be consistent. That's what we're looking for from him. You know, I think that Coach Elko has gotten pretty good at coach speaking things that he feels he needs to coach speak and then not coach speaking things he feels he doesn't need to coach speak. And I think that here he really didn't want to dive any deeper into this. It sounds like Moose needs to be more consistent consistent to get on the field more. That's just the reality. Um, so, you know, get on the field more, get more more targets. That's just That's just the reality here. And I don't think... It's the, it, you know, I think you're really talented at that position. You got Barber. I mean, you got, you got a lot of guys back. You got a lot of young guys. There's a lot there. I mean, it, it, listen, if we all love Moose, but if he just isn't the answer receiver, he just isn't the answer receiver. I mean, this is now two years of weird stuff going on with him. So um, if that's just the reality now, it's just the reality now. So I think that if um, you need to, to move on and, and play other people, that's what you got to do. So, um That'll be something interesting to monitor over the next few weeks. Uh, Coach Elko also had this to say about the offense of Arkansas. Right now, they're a top 10 total offense in the country. Bobby Petrino has them playing at a very high level. I agree with that. This team offensively, you know, is um is going to need to get dialed and need to get things figured out. Uh, I mean, defensively against the offense of Arkansas because I think it's pretty, pretty good. Um. So those are most of the quotes. I have another quote we're going to run through with Marcel Reed. We'll talk about it here in a minute. Um, we'll get to talking about him here in segment three. But right now, I want to talk about the Arkansas defense. So is the Arkansas defense good or is the Auburn offense terrible? I think that is the debate early into the season. So Arkansas, you play Arkansas Pine Bluff, win that game 70-0, to kind of write it off. You then give up 39 points to Oklahoma State. I mean, and it, now it was an overtime game. So, how many did they score heading before overtime? Um, well, they only scored eight points in overtime. So, they still put up 31 points um, without overtime. And I'll tell you, um, then they give up 27 points to UAB in a win. And then they give up 14 to Auburn. But what I will tell you about this Auburn team is while while it didn't they well, this uh, this game I mean well I'll tell you this this Auburn Arkansas game from last week Auburn moved the football a lot I mean look at this they had 285 passing yards four interceptions and then they had 146 rushing yards so you know I mean they moved the football. The turnovers were what caused them problems, which that's something crazy, which is great for the Aggies because if Auburn's awful, that can that's a win being you know, on the schedule that is one that we thought was going to be a lot tighter, maybe. So um that would be very helpful. 
But the reality here is I don't I don't think this defense is very good. I think Texas A&M should be able to move the football. I think they should be able to score points. Um, I think that they should be able to put a lot up in this game. And then if your defense, which is really good, is able to stop Taylor Green uh, and the rest of this, you know, this offense, I think that you're, you should win this football game. Um, so I think people are going to look at what – and I mean, some of those throws from the Auburn quarterbacks against Arkansas, like my point is, I think a lot of people are going to be like, man, the Arkansas defense was a lead against Auburn. Some of these throws were just so awful. Like, I don't even know how to put it in perspective. Like, they were just so terrible. It, anyone should have been able to pick them off. It wasn't like anything special the Arkansas defense did. It was kind of just like, oh, thanks, man. I'm sitting right here and you threw the ball right to me. Appreciate it. Like it was, <laughs> that was the reality. Um, so it, when, once again, Auburn moved the ball and that's what, you know, and I think that Texas A&M, whether it's Connor, whether it's Marcel Reed is going to take care of the football a lot better than we saw from Auburn last weekend. And if they do that and they move it and they score points, I think the Aggies are going to win this football game. So, you know, that, that's kind of my, my thought here on this defense is, I think that people are going to be quick to be like, man, their defense is pretty good. I don't think it is. I think that Texas A&M should be able to move the football, and I think they should be able to score points. So that is my thoughts on the defense. And then before we move on to talking a little bit about Marcel Reed, I do want to talk about um, – I just think this is a huge game, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, like, like let's, uh, let's take a little schedule update where we're at. The Aggies currently are 3-1. and one. You've still got a lot of huge games. You got Missouri at home, which is an early kickoff, by the way, which is just insane to me. Um, you've got Mississippi State on the road, LSU at home, at South Carolina, New Mexico State at home, at Auburn, and then Texas at home. I'm just telling you, with how awful Auburn looks, South Carolina's got some quarterbacks banged up and interesting stuff going on there, and obviously New Mexico State's and Mississippi State's terrible. I, I'm telling you, I think if you take care of business against Arkansas, a team that I don't think is necessarily great, but I think that they've been better than I thought so far this year. If you take care of business in that football game, I think you're putting yourself in a really, really good position for the rest of the season. So um, this is just a huge game, in my opinion. I think if you win this game, you're four and one. I think you've got. Win still on the board against, in all honesty, for Mississippi State, Auburn, New Mexico State, for sure. Uh, so I think you win this game, you're four and one. You got three wins there. You're seven and one. Obviously, there's games between. Then you find a way to beat South Carolina, which once again, I think is a very, very, very beatable football team. And you find a way to take down one of those three Missouri, LSU, and Texas. You can win nine football games. We're, you're back in on that train. But right now, the key is beating Arkansas. To do this, you have to beat Arkansas, which I think they're very capable of doing. So um, that's why this game is so huge. This feels like the difference maker. If you win this game, I'm back in on, on nine wins being a legit possibility. So you've got to go win um, this football game, I, I think it's a must win. I really do think it's a must win. Um, now, I mean, it's hard to say it, it, any game is not a must win, but if you want to overachieve, your path to doing so gets a whole heck of a lot easier if you win this football game because, I mean, I really think you're set up in a great position. So win this game, and I, I think nine wins is very, very much on the table for the Aggies with an outside chance of getting to 10 and maybe sneaking in the playoff. But that is, that's you're on the outside looking in there, but you got to win this week for that to even be a possibility. So huge, huge win this week for the Aggies would be awesome. We're going to talk about Marcel Reed and, 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 you know, I want to reiterate some points from yesterday and, and, and break some things down. We'll have that conversation coming up right here on locked on Aggies. Hey, NHL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a 
a hunch in the middle of the game. You can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with 200 bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So last night, got a huge win on FanDuel in the uh, NFL games. James Cook and Jamar Chase, first touchdown score parlayed. Put $5. Really wish I'd have put more. Huge win on FanDuel. I love doing those when there's two Monday night games. It's just a ton of fun. Um, but you got NHL stuff going on right now. The MLB playoffs are coming around the corner. You've got a lot of exciting things to bet on over at FanDuel right now. So visit FanDuel.com right now to go see America's number one sports book and the sports book partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. So yesterday I talked about Marcel Reed. And, you know, how you know, y'all every day here at Locked On Aggies know that I'm willing to admit when I think I maybe over – when I'm when I think I'm wrong, when I've overstated something, I don't think I'm wrong in what I was saying yesterday about Marcel Reed. I do think maybe I I made it sound a little more extreme, and that could potentially be in the title of the show yesterday. But I mean, if you watch back that um, film from yesterday or from or from Saturday, I mean, Marcel Reed did a lot well, and and a lot well. He always does. But there's a few throws. This is the point. You were playing Bowling Green, okay? We were playing Bowling Green. You're not playing Missouri or Texas or, or heck, even Arkansas. I mean, you know, you're playing Bowling Green, who's an okay, you know, uh, non-huge team, right? I mean, they're fine, but still. And there was just a lot of throws. There was, there, there were some inaccurate throws that I think can lose you football games against – really good teams. The reality here is, uh, you know, I don't, we don't, Marcel Reed played a, a fine game. He took care of the football. He ran the ball again. He did a lot well. He, I mean, of course he did. And, and, and I reiterated that yesterday. What I'm saying is, if you want to beat some teams that are better than you, some of those throws he needs to make. That's my whole argument. I'm not saying he played terrible because he didn't. He did a lot well. He moved the football on the ground. He moved the football through the air. He could have been more accurate throwing the football. And I, once again, I mean, for a, um, you know, for a quarterback to overachieve, for a football team to overachieve, you got to be accurate throwing the ball. That's how you're going to win games. And there were a lot of, once again, just passes that I think were just a hair off that in more significant games against better football teams could lose you games. That's my whole point. That's all I'm saying, I love Marcel. He's played great. He stepped in and been really good for this football team. I mean, heck, once again, he is 2-0. You know, he's looking to make it 3-0 this week unless somehow Connor comes in and plays. So that's my whole argument is I think there were a few throws where he missed a guy by, by a hair. That's a throw you really need to hit in some really important games once you get deeper in SEC play. That's that's my whole argument on Marcel Reed. I, I think I was a little strong in, in the wording of some of the stuff there. I agree with y'all on that. Um, but still, I do, I, I'm not gonna say yes, he was incredible, he was great. There were some throws he could have made that I think will make a difference in, in in more significant games. That's my whole argument. Um, there. That's gonna do it for today's episode of Locked On Aggies. Thank y'all so much for being here every single day. Really, really, really appreciate y'all. Hope everyone has an outstanding rest of their day today. And we'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Aggies.